discovered at UCLA in the in the 80s that there's a part of the brain um, called the orbitofrontal cortex, which sits right over the eye sockets, um, that is overactive in people with obsessive compulsive disorder. In thinking about the implications of that, it became clear to me that this potentially could be a disorder in which you could you could study the interface between um, inner experience and brain function and even more importantly um, investigate how people's willful choices about how they direct their attention could be shown to change how the brain works using what was then the very new field of, of brain imaging. Based on that insight, we designed a study that compared the use of um, the common medications of that time, which are still, still basically the common medications that are used to treat obsessive compulsive disorder, you know, about three decades later. Um, but using those medications and comparing them to people who received no medication but used um, essentially this cognitive behavioral approach to treating OCD, which I supplemented with this mindfulness aspect. Um, because already by the 80s, I was extremely interested in, in, the, in what mindfulness was and how you could apply it in clinical situations. We were very fortunate to show um, in papers that were published in the late and mid 90s that this um, mindfulness enhanced cognitive behavioral therapy um, did in fact change how the circuitry in the brain, which is now known to underlie um, symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder, that people were able to systematically change that brain circuitry um, just by using this mindfulness-based cognitive behavioral therapy for treating obsessive compulsive disorder.